The default spans get us a lot of the way there, but they don't cover everything. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to wire up Next.js to open telemetry. There's basically just two main ways. The first is using the at Vercel Otel package, which is incredibly useful, does a whole bunch of stuff for us out of the box. And then there's a manual integration that, you know, is us importing the open telemetry node SDK and configuring and starting that ourselves. Both of those require that we actually enable this instrumentation hook. And that's important because, you know, you don't want to have extra overhead for your Next.js application of measuring spans and starting things up if you're not actually going to use that. So why slow down an application that isn't going to use that stuff? So instead you need to configure this hook. Once that hook's set up, then you set up an instrumentation.ts file. The instrumentation.ts file basically consists of one function that we are exporting called register. Register is going to run once for the entire instantiation of our next app. This is useful for maybe setting up globals, but it's also where we're going to wire up our open telemetry stuff. Whether we are using the at Vercel Otel package or doing a manual integration, we're going to get a whole bunch of spans output from Next.js automatically without any extra effort on our part. Those spans are going to be, you know, things like requests and, you know, rendering certain parts of the route. And I'm going to go and dig into what those spans are here in a second, but I just wanted to mention that this applies wherever you have Next.js hosted whether it's using Vercel's Edge or Node.js runtime, whether it's on your own self-hosted implementation, Next.js outputs these same spans automatically for you. Within those spans, we're gonna have some default data that gets attached to them. That data might be the span type, the route, the uh, page, which might be a meta file, like a layout.ts file. That meta file is only useful once we combine it with the route that it was rendered with so that we can know, yeah, the layout.ts might take longer for a specific route than it does for others. That's worth us understanding and knowing. And there's even a bit of metadata of whether this page was served with RSCs or not. When we look at the actual spans that Next.js is wiring up for us, we kind of see three main categories. There are common spans that are basically for any implementation of Next.js. There are a couple app router spans, and then there's a couple pages router spans. And I'm gonna start digging through what those are. So the common spans might be HTTP.method and the next.route. There might be a fetch request that includes the HTTP method and the URL that you're hitting. There will be generating metadata, resolving page components, resolving segment modules, and even start response, which is a really interesting one. That is just a timestamp of when Next.js started sending the response. Because Next.js can stream responses, that's an important timestamp to actually be aware of. And then when we look at app router spans, there's gonna be render route. There's gonna be executing the API route that has next route with it. For the pages router, we're gonna see get server side props in the route. We're gonna see get static props in the route and just rendering of the entire route via the pages router. The default spans get us a lot of the way there, right? They really handle a lot of how our application can be visualized and things we can trace through it, but they don't cover everything because there may be certain parts of your app that you wanna make sure you are tracking the speed of and making sure you're doing quickly enough, etc. So you're going to want to create custom spans. To create a custom span is incredibly easy. Actually. You just get the tracer, then you start an active span on that tracer. And then from there, you do your work. And that might be fetching some third party data and then processing it in some way, or maybe gluing together multiple database calls and aggregating them. The big important part here is to make sure that you're stopping that span. Otherwise, it can be less useful. Like I mentioned earlier, there are two ways of integrating OpenTelemetry with Next.js. We're going to talk first about the at Vercel Otel package. All you do is take this register Otel function and pass the name of your application to it, and you're done. But you can also configure a much larger object that you pass instead of just the name, and that object has a lot of props. So most of these actually seem like they are related to the OpenTelemetry SDK, so at Vercel Otel is probably just passing those right on through to the Node.js SDK itself. But that was too simple. What fun is that? Instead, let's do a manual integration. With a manual integration, there is one important aspect to remember. It does not work on the edge runtime out of the box. There's some things you can do to make that work that I'll briefly mention, but just remember, you can only use this in the Node.js runtime. So you're gonna need to wrap how you implement your uh, a manual integration, you're going to need to wrap that in the register function with an if check to make sure that you're on a Node.js runtime, not the edge runtime. 
At its most basic, the manual integration consists of about five lines of logic and config. But if we want to actually make it more useful and, you know, more complicated, we can actually wire up the auto instrumentations for things like Pino, our logging library in which we can pass a function that even modifies those logs as we see. We can wire up uh, to the HTTP library for Node.js instead of just fetch like Next.js does. We can also decide whether we do or don't want to log uh, file system access and things like that. I simply disabled it here because it was really noisy in the logs while I was doing my demo stuff. One important thing is, after you have done your instrumentation and configured the SDK, make sure to start the SDK. I missed that when I was actually learning about this stuff, and it took me a little bit to debug. I mentioned earlier that the manual integration doesn't support the Vercel Edge out of the box, but it does seem like there's a way we can work around that. And keep in mind, this is not official, but at least according to a comment from Lee Robinson a couple years ago on Hacker News, Vercel's Edge runs on top of Cloudflare Workers. So since that's the case, Cloudflare Workers actually expose an API to us called Wait Until. And that's important for like one very specific reason. The OpenTelemetry SDK isn't automatically sending every span all at once. It's actually gonna like batch them together and flush it out to the collector for us. The problem there is that the Cloudflare worker or any serverless function in general might finish before the OpenTelemetry SDK has decided to flush. So instead we can do wait until the OpenTelemetry SDK can flush and then our collector can get that, and then finally the worker can close. I have not messed with this myself, but it is something that is incredibly useful inside of the Highlight SDK that they're doing for you. And that's not all that Highlight does for you. Highlight actually helps you with a whole bunch of this stuff, right? The collector is a service, and that service actually needs to make sure it can handle the scale you might be sending to it from your back end. Scaling the collector is then something that you would have to deal with yourself, and any time that some dev or person on your team is putting towards that, it's time that they're not putting towards delivering features for your application. So instead, you can use the highlight collector and they will handle the scale of that. And you can basically just, you know, output directly to them and let them deal with it. Beyond handling just scalability for you, highlight also kind of fills in some of the gaps that the Node.js SDK has. One thing that's missing from the Node.js SDK right now is logging. Logging is listed as under development, which means that if you want to do that, you're going to have to do that yourself. But Highlight does that for you. They also do error tracing and basically other stuff that you would expect from any major uh, vendor in this space. The big thing that sets Highlight apart, in my opinion, is session replay. And session replay can be thought of as a big picture of the user's path through your application, not just a single request response. So you can see where they're clicking, what forms they're filling out, where they might have hit errors, etc. That kind of like client-side telemetry is actually not official for open telemetry yet. Client-side tracing is something that they're expecting vendors to kind of like figure out and then come back to them with feedback for. So yeah, to do that yourself would involve a lot of trial and error and wiring that up on your own. That pretty much sums up what I was getting at with the video today. I know I went from topic to topic pretty abruptly. I probably missed some stuff. If you want to learn more about it, check out the links to the documentation below. Check out highlight blog posts as well. Uh, and whether you're using the at Vercel Otel package for Next.js, whether you're doing a manual integration for Next.js, whether you're doing your own collector and, you know, uh, database providers, etc., or whether you're letting Highlight handle that for you, I think open telemetry is incredibly important and should probably be looking into it for your organization just to understand how your applications work and function and what could be better about them. So like and subscribe and uh, hopefully I was informative and hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully I can do some more in the future.